Also, tensions are rising between China and Taiwan following Speaker Pelosi's visit just last week. That's right. Beijing says it will continue conducting large-scale military drills in the air and water surrounding the island in an apparent show of force in the region. Chinese officials are calling these drills the, quote, new normal, saying they will not stop until reunification. The declaration comes just one day after Beijing announced the end of its live fire exercises surrounding the island. China is accusing, or Taiwan rather, is accusing China of using the drills as a test run for a possible invasion. However, President Biden says he is not concerned with China's latest acts of aggression. I'm not worried, but I'm concerned that they're moving as much as they are. But I don't think they're going to do anything more. Let's bring in Ambassador Max Bacchus now for more on this. He is the former U.S. ambassador to China and a former Montana senator. Ambassador Bacchus, welcome. Great to have you with us. So what do you make of this latest show of aggression? And what is the strategy behind China stopping its military drills just to resume them once again? Is there more behind this showboating, do you think? I think this is um, a typical Chinese salami slicing. Uh, China has a very long perspective on history. China tends to be quite patient. China likes stability, but China likes to act. And because it is very patient, it tends not to conduct full-scale invasions, but rather I call it salami slicing. It's a little bit a step at a time, a little bit of squeeze play, just like they did in the South China Sea a few years ago. That is, China dumped sand on submerged atolls in the South China Sea, and over years, slowly built them up, and now they're islands, and now they're military outposts. And we Americans uh, oppose that, uh, but we, we, the Chinese were able to conduct them with impunity. You know, might makes right, and they just did it. So I think I suspect the same is going on here. China is going to try to squeeze Taiwan, salami slicing, a little bit of step here at a time, one at a time, a little more closer, a little closer than Taiwan, uh, cut down some of the sea lanes a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. And uh, over time, the goal is to try to persuade Taiwan that, hey, maybe we got to figure out some way to reach some accommodation with China. And also the goal is to try to persuade the United States, hey, don't get too involved over here. Um, um, and it's, try to, it's trying to re reduce U.S. resolve to, for, for a full-scale defense of Taiwan. Yeah, Mr. Ambassador, it's interesting you point out that China takes a, a patient and long-term approach to Taiwan. That works in multiple directions. It also works for Taiwan, which has its own leadership, its different legal system, its own currency, its own flag, its own anthem, its own everything. It gets more independent, it would seem, on paper by the day. Uh, how does this end if there is not a persuasion process, use the nice word that you did, mm -hmm. does war eventually come to the doorstep of Taiwan? Well, uh, we have to remember, um, it was drilled into me when I was an ambassador over there that uh, uh, Taiwan is existential to the Chinese leadership. I mean, it's non-negotiable. Uh, they are going to take over Taiwan, hopefully peacefully in their view, hopefully if it happens peacefully in our view too, but it is existential to the Chinese. It is, uh, Taiwan is not existential to the United States. So China will will do whatever it thinks it can. It's, I think the Chinese they, they blunder sometimes, but they're pretty clever. Um, they'll the goal again with a, with a kind of a squeeze and a kind of a propaganda campaign and maybe a kind of a, some kind of negotiation eventually, not now, maybe in a year with the, with the Taiwanese government, maybe new leadership in, in Taiwan. It's just hard to say, but they will figure out. They'll do the best they can as well as they can. If you if Taiwan were to declare independence, then all then the game's over. Then China will invade. But mm. China knows it cannot do that. China knows it, excuse me, Taiwan knows it can't do that. Taiwan knows it can't declare independence. So it'll do it as much as possible to get close to it. China understands that. So that's the reason for the squeeze play. Wow. And so, Ambassador, then what is your take on Speaker Pelosi's trip to Taiwan? Did she make the right decision, in your view, to go through with her visit? Uh, my view is she should not have gone. Um, it just ratcheted up the tension. 
the goal of the U.S. Uh, policy towards China should, is to reduce tension, not increase tension. And the White House did not want her to go. Uh, she went anyway. And um, well, almost all China experts I talked to feel as a mistake. She should not have gone. I think it was a mistake. Uh, but she's a speaker. She is who she is. And so she decided to go. And it's unfortunate. Well, we will see what the outcome is, the long term and the short term. All right. Well, Ambassador Bacchus, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your insight. You bet.